Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at similar triangles. I'm going to show you how to tell if two triangles are similar, and if they are similar, how to find the missing side length. Now, two triangles are similar when they have the same shape, but different size. So in similar triangles, the matching angles will be equal, and matching sides are going to be proportional. And I'll show you what this means in a little bit. Now, if you know that two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles will be equal. Let me show you this below. So we have two triangles A, B, and C, D, E, and F. We know that the two bottom angles are 50 and 70, respectively. So I can find angle A up here by taking 180 degrees, because I know that all three of these angles add up to 180. And if I subtract 50 and 70, I can find angle A, which will be 60 degrees. Now, since angle D has the same properties, because we know the bottom two are 50 and 70, angle D must also be 60 degrees. So this means that the corresponding angles, or the matching angles, are equal. Because they are equal, that means that these two triangles, ABC and DEF, are similar. And we write this as ABC, and we put a triangle in the front to show that this is a triangle, is similar to, with our similar symbol, triangle DEF. Now when we write this, we need to match all the angles up. So A is 60, D is 60. So that is going to be our first letter. And then B is equal to E, so that would be our second letter. And then C is equal to F, and that would be our third letter. Now the order A, B, C doesn't matter. We can also write this as C, B, A, or B, A, C. But as long as the other triangle also matches and flips around as well. Now, now that we know that the triangles are similar, then we can also say that the corresponding sides are proportional. So that means that side AB, if I divide that by side DE, because these are in the same place here, and the angles are both 60 and 50 on both sides, that is equal to side AC divided by side DF, which is this second side over here. And that is also equal to side BC divided by EF. So we know that this bottom side is proportional with this one. So these are all fractions, and we write them as fractions so that we can then uh, say that they are equal, and then we can use them to solve for missing side lengths, which I will show you in a little bit. Conversely, meaning in the other direction, if we know that triangle GHI is similar to JKL, meaning that we already know that two triangles are similar, then we can write six true statements about the two triangles. So, for example, we know that angle G equals angle J. So I'm going to mark that on my triangle, like so, with one mark. So angle G equals angle J. And then we also know that angle H it's the middle letter equals angle K, because that's the middle letter. And we'll mark this with two lines. So angle H equals angle K. And then finally, we know that angle I, the last letter, is equal to angle L. And I'll mark this with three lines, because it's a different angle. Now, we also know three other things, and that is that side GH divided by JK is equal to side HI divided by KL. Now notice that in the numerator or the top of my fraction, this represents the larger triangle and the bottom two side lengths are the smaller triangle. Now it doesn't matter which triangle or which side lengths you put on the top or the bottom as long as both of the two small ones are on the top or the two larger ones are on the bottom. 
Now we also know that HI divided by KL, which is the second side, is equal to GI over JL, which is the third side length. And then finally, we can go back to GH divided by JK and make that equal to GI divided by JL, which is the third side of the triangle. So it's very important when writing the proportions uh, for the corresponding sides to make sure that you keep the same triangle on the top of each fraction. So let's take a look at some examples. In this first example, I'm going to name the similar triangles and the ratio of the sides. Now I'm actually going to go through step by step to show you why the angles are equal so that the triangles are similar. Now we can see that we have two arrows here. And these two arrows indicate that AB is parallel to DE. And this is important to know because now we know some of the angles are equal. The first one, let's state, is that this one over here is equal to this one over here. Now we can't just use one letter, especially for this one where D is, because if I just say D, then we don't know which part of D we're talking about. So let's use three letters to describe the angles. So our first one is that B, a, D, so that's this angle here by A, is equal to angle E, D, C. And that is because of something called corresponding angles. So corresponding angles is where the two angles are located underneath or above the parallel lines. We also have another set over here. I'm going to mark it with two lines because they're different from the ones I just marked off with red, or in red. So we have angle ABE equal to angle DEC. And again, these are also corresponding. Okay, so now that we know that those two angles are equal, then we know that angle C must equal to itself actually because angle C is part of the bigger triangle and also part of the smaller one. So we can say that angle C equals angle C and this is saying or we can say that this is because it's the same angle. So now that we know all of that we can therefore say so therefore my three little dots triangle A B C is similar to triangle D, E, C. And remember, we always have to match um, the angles together. So now that we know that these are uh, similar, and we can say that they're similar because of something called A, 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 which actually stands for angle, angle, angle. But you don't actually need to know that. I'm just writing that down for you so you do know how to prove that these uh, two triangles are similar. All right, so we now know that AB divided by DE, so the first two letters, is equal to BC divided by EC, which is the last two letters, which equals AC divided by DC. All right, let's take a look at another example. So in this one here, we can see that angle F and angle J are equal and that's given to us. So I'm going to say that angle F equals angle J and that's given. Now we also know that this side of angle H is equal to this side of angle H. So angle F H G is equal to angle J H I. And this is because these two angles are vertically opposite. Now since those two angles are equal, we now know that angle G must equal angle I. And that's because they are the third angles of the triangle. So angle G equals angle I. And these are the third angles of the triangle are equal. 
So therefore, now we can say that triangle F, H, G is similar to triangle J, H, I, and again, because of angle, angle, angle. So we now know that F, H divided by J, H is equal to H, G divided by H, I equals F, G divided by J, I. And when you're writing out this proportion, you don't actually have to go back to look at the triangle because now that we've written it out here, that triangle F, H, G is similar to J, H, I, then we can just take the letters from here and match them up. Let's now take a look at an example where we have to find the missing side length. So here we have um, this triangle here, and I'm gonna label the vertices to help us um, call them out. So we'll have triangle A, B, C, and then we'll have D down here. So we can see that we have angle C here, and this one's a hard one because we have some triangles that are embedded. So if I actually take A, D, B, I'm gonna flip it around so that it looks like this. Then I can actually match this up with the bigger triangle right here. And that will match up with the smaller one right here that I just redrew out, but I'm flipping it around. So when I do that, I can see that this angle C is equal to angle B, and therefore angle A, which is down here, has to then equal this angle A here, which makes sense. Now the reason that I've done this is because we can write down now that triangle a, B, C is similar to triangle A, D, B. Now, when I write this out, I'll have AB divided by AD equals BC divided by DB, which equals AC divided by AB. So I'm just writing out the proportions based on the letters up here. Now we're going to fill this in with our numbers. So AB, we don't know what that is. So I'm just going to write AB. AD, we know is 8. BC, we don't know. DB, we have LX there. AC, well, we can see that's 8 plus 18, so that's 26. And then AB, again, we don't know what that is. So if you take a look, we have two fractions here. Uh, we actually have a lot of things that are missing. Um, and we can't even find x, because x isn't even part of um, a fraction where we even have the value for bc. So what we're going to do is look at this triangle a little bit more. All right. So now we know that angle a equals angle a. But we now also know that this angle b from this smaller triangle here, I'm going to erase all these different lines. This angle B here, which is from this smaller triangle here, and that's this angle here, has to be equal to then this angle over here. Right? So we discovered that already. Now since this is the third angle, because we know this is already 90, then this over here has to also be our third angle, so this time what I'm comparing is this triangle here, which I've outlined in black, is equal to this triangle, which I'm outlining in red. All right, so I'm going to tilt this so that they match. So I'm going to tilt the ADB this time like this. All right, so then I'm going to label this. So AD we know is 8, 